Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this BMW iX. This is their all new pure electric sort of X5 Range Rover rival and I booked it in because I like clean sheet designs. This is basically BMW's technical statement of the future of a pure electric car. That's why I got it in. When actually BMW sent me the note, I did wonder what I'd booked in because it's, its name, its official name is BMW i20 iX xDrive 50M Sport. And I had to do a Google, iX is their four wheel drive, there's two electric motors in this car and the 50 in its name denotes this is the bigger battery model. They claim up to 600 kilometer range, so 360 miles. Now, in, on this test, I'm going to take you through it, take you through the pricing, etc. And I've also done quite a big journey on this to really test if that range is true. And then we'll have a look at the more details, how it actually drives. Anyway, start off, let's go and have a closer look. Now, I'm going to kick off on the front on the design of this car because this is its statement look, isn't it? What has happened to the BMW kidneys on this car? Um, they are a very technical area, in actual fact. There's all sorts of radar sensors going on under here. I can see little wires in here, and it's sort of clear that it's very, very odd. But it hides all the tech and give, is meant to give it this cleaner look at the front. And I've actually got used to it. I'm ashamed to say whether it's just because it's black and it sort of blends in, but uh, it's a good look. And then it's very clean because it doesn't have to take in a lot of air. There's one air rushing around there. There is something down here. And I think these are actually moves. So I think there's a sort of intelligent air intake going on there. What there isn't is an opening bonnet. I couldn't believe it. I'd looked all through the uh, handbook to see if I was going mad. What there is, is where you put the screen wash in. Now, so that's, that's the only thing that opens at the front, even though it does look like an opening bonnet to me. The other thing, these very sophisticated laser lights, sort of slim fit. The whole thing with this car was to get the uh, drag coefficient down. It's 0.25 CD factor on that, which is super low. Yeah, come around to the side, this uh, car sits on these 22 inch wheels which are 275 wide 40 so this is the m sport model and i think that's part of it and i'm going to go into the price of this car because with this bigger battery 105 kilowatt battery this example you see here starts with no extras 94,000 pounds a lot of money with the extras, it's got technical pack, interior cam cameras, um, parking, etc. Comfort pack and sky lounge pack. It's got a panoramic roof, etc. The car you see here is 115,670. So this is a really quite expensive car, but the range does start with the smaller battery version. If you want to, um, it's an iDrive 40 M Sport 69,905 but the range then is down to um, 257 miles. So you lose about a hundred mile range by going for the lower model. But yeah, quite a statement. And also the size of it, it is range, range Rover size. This is a five meter long car, but it just feels so incredibly modern inside. That sweep of the dash, that's all lighting up because I've opened the door. Look at it, it goes, goes a bit nuts. This is a sort of light show. All that's going on. I can feel it's actually already trying to preheat the cabin. As soon as I open the door, you can see here range 99% uh, battery and then the range 300, oh, 310 miles. It's just clicked down. If you come out, you'll just see the very fancy stereo on, on here. We'll go around this and these frameless windows. So no frame around the door. But the most exceptional item, I think, when I first this car first arrived, look at this carbon fibre. This car has a carbon fibre structure. So it's on a shell. We'll see it again when we open the boot. Big surprise that. I hadn't realised they'd use carbon fibre in this way. You can see it as you open the door here. And I think that side impact, um, huge strength, huge stiffness to the body and a way of trying to make it lighter than it might have been. Oh, I ought to just get in the back here because this car is vast. It's, yes, it's a five meter length car, but it feels back here as though I'm in the long wheelbase range range at 5.2. And that's all one of the beauties of an electric car. 
the battery's underneath, there's no engine up the front, um, you've got more interior space to play with. Again, very slim lights here. It sort of sits lower. You can see that CD factor. You can tell that they've made it as streamlined as they can. With the sort of bumpers and here, you think there's going to be exhaust poking out, but obviously there isn't. And I'll also like how the, you see the lights there. If I open this up, you'll also get lights here. So if you have the hazard flashes on and you're broken down uh, or side of the motorway or whatever emergency going on, um, you've, the lights still operate at night when you've got the tailgate open. Big boot, really good cubby hole down here for the cables, etc. We've got our own cables. I haven't actually opened the, the thing. And then if you can just look into the boot, you'll see a nice little trick. And that is this actually folds flat. So it's proper load. I do like the way those seats do that. That's a big load, very easy to operate. One annoying thing I find on this car, and I'm, I find it with other cars as well, the electric socket. It's here, right at the back of the car. And I don't know, I don't know. So the charging we have at home, I've put it inside the garage. And I do like cars that you can plug in near the front. And I think that's a normal way of doing it. If you have a charger at home, you drive up to your charger. These side chargers, I don't think they work. I, I, if I go to um, InstaVault um, locations, they tend to have the parking bays and the charger is at the end of the bay. So you have to back in to do this. I do wonder if they do it so it shows off the front of the car, the signature, the look. Oh, it's a BMW, it's one of those new BMWs charging. They actually do it for marketing purposes putting the charger at the back of the car rather than convenience for the owner. Right, what I'm gonna do now, take it outside, take it around the cabin, take it for a drive. All very different in here, my goodness. I mean, it just feels concept car as soon as you sort of step into this thing. Sort of weird noises coming from it, weird shaped wheel. My goodness, God, yeah, and obviously electric and uh, just, uh, I mean, I think I'm in an arcade that feel of that but in here i some of the things i really like on here is the low dash i love the use of this instead of having an ipad sort of stuck on the dash this is the whole display i love that it's curved i love the shape of it i love the information these two screens it, it's yeah visibility out is good because of it it just minimizes the dash it just looks so clean in here. This one has extra sparkle because it's got these sort of crystal effect, which is an option on it. I think it's a little bit Cheshire, and I come from Cheshire. Not sure about that, but the use of wood here, and then I've got the menu sort of just laid into the wood. Very clever. And then this sort of no, no sort of space here. I'm oh, sorry, no sort of center console that died, sort of separates passenger and driver. There's this space I can put my feet across and put bags here. I've got wireless charging for the phone down here, cup holders, etc. And of course the plugs. Yeah, just a completely different feel. And I've, yeah, I've got a glass roof. Uh, panoramic roof that I can press that and it goes opaque and can't see anything out and then I'll press it again oh I can see the trees again just tech so that's the feel of it to make it go I use that little thing and put D in and uh, move off and off we go it's as easy as that so yeah I'm gonna head out onto the better roads then you have to warm the engine up on this thing I just go oh, what have i got i've got 306 range with 97 percent battery i think when i um, started it this morning i've been fiddling around i think it was 314 mile range that's proper range for an electric car today but anyway we'll discuss that in a moment I love just looking at this, just about to pull out of here. I've got the front cameras come on because I, I was reversing it. And I, if I move the steering wheel, the camera at the front moves. So rather than just sort of the, the line just going to where you're going, no, in this one, the camera moves around with the wheel. So I've just got a normal mode at the moment. Off we go. Let's bring that down there. Off. There's 60 miles an hour just in an instant, very easy to do. And I, I've measured the sounds, I'm like, yeah, super quiet. And I was on the M25 and yesterday, and 
on that noisy bit of concrete, it could barely register 72, 73. So this is the quietest car I've ever tested. And it makes such a difference. It's, it's odd um, cabin sound because you think, oh, I can hear some road noise and stuff. It's only when you get a meter out and you can see just how quiet it is. Or you've got people in the car and you're just talking, you're suddenly raising, you're just not raising your voice. That's how you tell a really quiet car. You, your ears always pick up any sound there might be, but there's a real hushness to this car. Well, the key thing to me for an um, electric car when you're paying this sort of money is range. This is your main car. This isn't a sort of run around. So how can you use it? Can you use it like you do a regular car? Can you do that drive down the corner and that sort of thing? And that's why I was really keen to find out if that 300 mile plus range was true. And so this week I had to do some filming down at Brands Hatch on my little Lancia Zagato. So I thought it's 114 miles there. So that would have been 230 miles thereabouts to do the return journey. And this car arrived, and I think it was 267 mile range when the time I plugged it in at home, charged it 100%. So that's what I set off with. And it was just a normal journey. I had no interest in trying to save electricity so the heater was on. And at the end of the journey, got home, and it was 244.5 miles total distance covered. But I had 58 miles remaining. So it bettered the actual readout number and it was over 300 mile true range. So this is a genuine 300 mile plus range car. And as I say, on the motor, I was not driving it in any way economically. I was doing, you know, mid 70s so a true 70 or thereabouts on the motorway um, there was traffic there was something and yeah that's what I expect a car like this to do and this one does seem to do what it says on the tin but even after living with this car for a while I have to say if I go back to home this new layout basically they got rid of all the buttons you have a hazard flash and a max sort of ventilation clear the windscreen and a rear heated screen there and that's about it to do a seat, heated seats or something, I have to go into climate menu and then I've got all sorts of things on here uh, to do the seats very low and the fans, etc. I can adjust um, temperature if I go back to home. Um, I can adjust temperature up and down on here without having to go into climate, but anything else, I'm into the screen. And the other bit, I go into the menu, look at all this lot. I mean, there is so much stuff on here really worth sitting down in this car which I fortunately haven't had the time to just run through all this stuff. The other thing to consider about that range, it's got that range because it's well it's pretty efficient but it's also got a really big battery so 105 kilowatt hour battery on this and then you've got to think about recharging a great big battery. Now I'm lucky at home because I've got um, three phase electricity at home so I can charge at the maximum AC rate of 11, 11 kilowatts. And to charge this up from when I got home, it was eight hours, 47 minutes. But if you wanna charge this battery up just using a domestic supply, you know, 13 amp, you would have to charge it for 54 hours go from naught to 100% battery capacity. Over two days continuous charging. If you have a normal domestic charger in the UK, 7.4 kilowatt charge, well then it would take 16 hours to charge the battery in this car naught to 100%. Live in Germany and quite a few and other places around the world, they can't actually have as high capacity as we've got at home and they're half that rate 3.7 so then you're at 33 hours to recharge it so yeah you that's the sort of untold truth behind having a car with really good range and a really big battery you can't come home after you know being away all weekend come back with a very low battery plug it into domestic supply and then expect to get up seven o'clock in the morning with a full battery in your car no you'll probably just be 50 percent full or you have to use a fast charger away from home. And then obviously, I think it's maximum capacity if you go from 
10% battery charged at 80% at 195 kilowatts. It's 35 minutes, but there aren't that many chargers in the UK that can do that. This car is uh, 523 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 4. Point something seconds. So I'm just going to slow down. Yeah, one of the sides was a silent car. So there we are, 30 miles an hour. Norm Good God. A serious instant kick. There's no gearbox to change down. There's instant traction. There's two motors either end. Boof. Uh, I'd say that was more impressive than um, Taycan 4S I've driven or that Audi e-tron. Very impressive uh, this performance in this car. And, it, and sort of unexpected. It's this big family thing, but an overtaking weapon because it is so responsive to the throttle. Boof. I'm just doing 45 and, oh, I mean, you could probably sense it, it just, it, there's no effort. And it should be a lot of effort because the other downside of having a great big battery in this car is the weight of this car, 2,585 kilos, so nearly 2.6 tonnes of car we've got here. On the other side, because the battery's down low, it handles pretty well. So now I've put it into sport, let's see what happens. Sounds a bit growlier. Whether you can hear that, I'm not sure. Yeah, I seem to have a view of volcanoes or something with lots of red on them. So let's just chuck it into here, see what happens. Oh, oh. yeah. And punches me out there as I expected. I mean, the steering is just devoid. It's it's it's. It's responsive, there's not a lot of roll. I don't know if it's got roll control on this, whether it just relies on having the battery further down. But there's no chatter from the steering wheel at all. Let's go through some likes and dislikes of this car. Well, I suppose number one dislike, and whether I'm just looking at the spec too hard or not, I don't know. But it just, I just think, what are we doing with this efficiency, this drive for efficiency, but we're ending up with a family car that weighs 2.5 tonnes or 2.6 tonnes as near as damn it. I think this car should weigh under two tonnes, not approaching three. It's a personal thing because the actual dynamics are good, and if you don't look at the spec sheet, you wouldn't really know, only perhaps from the brakes design it's it's a bit marmite isn't it it looks very modern it's quite hard to create a car with this volume to look super sly and stylish but i can't say i loved it but i didn't love the look of the x5 but i live with it and i bloody love the car as a car and i think the same with this i think you'd really get to like this car but that price does seem chunky to me Hundred and fifteen thousand, as you see it here that's in Range Rover autobiography mode. That's not X5 mode. This is another step above. It's accomplished, but do you really want to pay that sort of money for this electric car that does the feel good factor is elsewhere? I My head is confused with the price point and what this car is and is it premium? I can't decide in my head what it is. It's more pre, way more premium than Tesla. Tesla could supply a lot of the dynamics, a lot of the range at a much lower price point than this. And then I think the final dislike is just the artificial feel with it. I'm just getting no feedback from it. I'm using this as a mobility device rather than enthusiast. Maybe that's what it's designed to do. So around here, let's have a look around here. Oh, a little bit of roll down there, which is fine by me. Around here, no squeal. Oh, I can punch out of there. I mean, it would embarrass a few hot hatches and things, this thing. The driver would enjoy that, but he wouldn't be getting the enjoyment from the dynamics and the feedback in the car. But there are plenty of likes with this car. I like that BMWs really look at the tech. This isn't a converted regular car. This is a car that they've looked at very hard and how they make an electric usable car. And it is superbly usable. It's really well thought out. Then the interior space and all the accessories, those roof boxes, ski boxes, bike carriers, it can tow this car. It's the first electric car I've seen with a proper tow capacity, two and a half tons tow capacity. You can get a um, tow bar, you know, retractable tow bar for this car. So it, it, that's terrific to see.
so yeah, in conclusion, mighty impressive car by BMW, this iX. I love how they've done a real deep dive into the tech and also the construction of the car. They're saying they can construct this car for around half the energy that would go into making a regular SUV with an internal combustion engine. Very clever, they've looked at both ends, not only the efficiency of the car, but also the efficiency of the build process and how they can reduce the CO2 footprint of the car during construction. But am I gonna swap into this? It's got to fit your needs. You've still got to think, can I live with an electric car? This has the range. Once you're over 300 miles, that makes it a whole lot usable as a solo car. Quite often, purchase of electric cars, I saw a report the other day, in the UK, 90% have access to a regular car. So the range isn't quite so critical. And as a second car, they work brilliantly. But as a first car, it's a big lifestyle change. This car gets very, very close, but you are exposed to the outside charge network, and I had an experience. I just wanted to check out the new charge, INT uh, charge at Chobham, and I suddenly saw this car sort of undertake me just as we're approaching the side. I was on the phone to someone, I thought well, that's a bit odd, and I then 20 meters later realized that he'd undertook me to get to the charge point first because there was only one left. I just don't want that in my life right now. So I'm gonna continue with my plug-in hybrid uh, until the outside charge network gets more established. But that is, that's not knocking this car. If the electric car suits you and suits your needs, I really feel as I'm driving the future in this car. The pleasure is in the silence and the tech and the ease of motion and the quietness and this was glorious on the m25 in traffic it was so good at coming to a stop when traffic around you i wasn't touching the pedals it radar to a stop and raid moved off radar moved off very gently so relaxing brilliant sound system in it so your enjoyment of this car is not like the performance collector car it's completely different sort of pleasures it, it it you know you enjoy from it but it also enhances when I do take that crazy contest for a driver so I mean, it is so different an experience to this but I don't want to sit on the M25 with it. So there you go that's my conclusion on iX. I think yeah it's a real change. I don't think the motor industry has seen the amount of change we're seeing now. It's great to experience these cars great that the engineers are producing these sort of cars. So I hope you enjoyed this video if you have Keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming on very soon. Thanks for watching.